this month I was just like, not enjoying it, DNF, not enjoying it, DNF. Don't you feel like it's autumn? <clears throat> Hello, I'm Charlotte and this is Books and Bargains. Today I'm coming to you with my August wrap up. Now August has been a bit of a marmite month for me in that I've either loved books or hated them. <laughs> there doesn't really seem to be much in between. Um, so I haven't looked at any stats this month, which I know gets me bad booktuber award, but I haven't. I just know that I've read 17 books, DNF'd four, this month I was just like not enjoying it DNF not enjoying it DNF however there are a couple that I didn't DNF that I probably should have done but we'll get into that so let's start at the bottom and work our way up and we will start with my DNFs this month so the first one that I DNF'd is Geekerella I know that this is pretty well loved on booktube but it just I just didn't get the hype I thought the characters were boring. I think because I'm not interested in conventions and things, I just wasn't, I just wasn't interested. So I DNF that one because I kept trying to pick it up and I'd read a couple of pages and just be like, no, this is not for me. So that one was DNF'd. The next one that I DNF'd was Fearless, How to Win at Life Without Losing Yourself by Dr. Pippa Grange. I really thought this was going to be amazing and this was part of a tandem collective read-along. However, this was all about sport, sport and business and look, there's nothing about the cover that would tell you that and it says about people being held back from the fear of failure which, hands up, I definitely am but I just couldn't get into this one. The next one that I DNF'd was Anne Gosling's The Shadow Bird. This was kindly sent to me by Legend Press as part of their blog tour. And there was nothing particularly wrong with this book. I just didn't want to pick it up. It, it follows a um, psychiatrist who is assessing a case of a man who is up for being released but he apparently murdered his family and it happens to be in the town where she grew up so there was this kind of intrigue about that but I wasn't intrigued enough to keep going and a lot of my friends who read this said it was pretty meh so I didn't want to invest in something that I just wasn't feeling and the last DNF this month was the Nakano thrift shop I'm really disappointed that I didn't like this one because I wanted to love it. Again, it was another tandem collective read along and I really thought that I would love it um, because it's me in a book, as I've said in plenty of other videos, but it just fell flat. There was just really nothing happening. And I think I got about halfway through and I was just like, no, don't want to pick this up again. I'm trying at the moment to finish all my books each month. I don't like taking them over into the next month. I like to have a clean slate. First of September, boom, new books, which I did actually do this month. There was only one that I carried over, two, sorry, that I've carried over and they're both non-fiction, so that's okay. For the record, it is the 2nd of September when I'm filming this and I am feeling the autumn vibes right now. I literally have just bought this dress and this you will see these in a thrift haul soon but anyway I digress I didn't rate any books one star this month generally if they were going to be a one star they were dnf'd but I did read four two star books and all four of these were on netgalley so thank you very much to the publishers for sending me these books but they just weren't my cup of tea number one of those is the baby group by Carolyn Kukoran I think it is. I read Through the Wall last year and so many people really raved about that book but I really didn't like the way that mental health was portrayed in it. I really thought that, I know I say this a lot, it just made me feel icky. I really loved the story from the one woman's point of view and if it had have been that all the way through I think I would have loved it. And the baby group, again, just fell really, really flat. Again, loved the premise of it, 
but actually the delivery just wasn't for me so I've come to the conclusion that it's that Caroline Kakorin's an author that's just just not for me just not my cup of tea Next I was sent The Middle-Aged Virgin by Olivia Spring, the author, and I thank her so much for getting in touch with me and asking me to review this book. But again, just not my cup of tea. The main character is absolutely insufferable. Like, she's meant to be approaching 40 and actually says and does things that make her sound like a 20-year-old. And the kind of things that... I could get away with in a 20 year old I was just like this woman is awful there was whole pages of just explaining what celebrities she was working with and what she was doing in that case and I just I slogged through it put it that way I feel really bad because if someone sends me something to review I tend to want to finish it but I just I just couldn't I have got another couple of books from the author and I've heard that they're a lot better so I will be trying to read those soon and let you know what I think. The third two star book I read this month was How It All Blew Up. I was really really excited for this one and I'm a bit on the fence with this one whether to give it a two or three star. So I enjoyed the premise of it. I loved basically a guy is about to be outed at school he is Iranian and if it had just been left at that that he was Iranian I think I'd have liked it more but from speaking to other own voices reviewers I'm obviously not Iranian or Muslim he hit basically okay so the premise is that this guy is stopped in an airport because there's been a family argument on the plane and it's them going back into how they got into this situation in the first place and there's a lot of comments of like and I, I get it I like the idea of it's so that you know they've been stopped because of racism and things however Muslim reviewers have said that this book was really marketed as a being about a Muslim man and in it there is I think the odd reference to his lapsed faith but that's it so <laughs> I kind of feel like the author and the publishing team used the Muslim faith to sell the book when it wasn't really about a Muslim. Um, like I say, I'm not an Own Voices reviewer, but I have read a few reviews on Goodreads from that. Also, so he goes to Italy and he's just he immediately finds a gay Iranian guy to live with and it just... Do you know those where things just happen and it just didn't feel realistic to me and what else was I going to say yeah he yeah it doesn't feel realistic I didn't like it and the nipple scene totally wasn't needed it was just thrown in there for the shock value didn't fit with the story and was not needed I told you I had some thoughts and the last two star book I read this month was Daddy by Emma Klein. Now this is a series of short stories and I've been getting more into short stories. But these ones just didn't fit for me. They, they didn't seem, you'd just kind of be thrown into the middle of a story. And then you would finish and I felt like you were missing the ending of a story. I really like starting new books, which is why I think that I like short stories so much. But I like them to be a rounded story. One that I really loved earlier in the year, I read Salt Slow, and each of those stories felt finished to me, whereas this didn't. However, it did show me that Emma Klein is a fantastic writer, but I just didn't like this collection. My one three star book this month is also on NetGalley, and this was The Cheerleaders. I requested this one because it was sold to me as kind of for fans of Karen M. McManus, which I'm a massive Karen McManus fan, have loved everything that I've read from her. However, do you remember going to like British seaside places where they would have, <laughs> this is going somewhere, I promise, where in the grab machines they would have, say, a Tigger and a Winnie the Pooh, but it was a bit of a poor knockoff of one? 
that's what I felt this book was. I thought it didn't have the intrigue of a Karen McManus. It wasn't written as well. Good story, but yeah, a bit of a knockoff, a bit of a cheap knockoff of a Karen M. McManus book, in all fairness. Also don't know why this was on NetGalley. I thought it was a new release, but it's been out ages apparently. And a lot of people have also said the same. So I gave that a three star because I did enjoy it. But didn't need to read it when I've already read Karen M. McManus books. They were just too similar without having the wow factor that those books had for me. So that was that. On to four star books now. And I read Noah Could Never by Simon James Green. Can't really tell you too much about this one without giving spoilers for the first book. So let's just say if you enjoy... I think I, what I said about the first one is imagine Will from the Inbetweeners, but he's gay, trying to figure out his sexuality. That's what you get in this book. I didn't love this one quite as much as Noah Can't Even. There was just a little bit of the sparkle missing for me, but actually it was a very good book. I also read and really enjoyed Sing by Vanessa Jones. Again, I can't work out when this is being released because I thought it was a new release, but from NetGalley it doesn't seem to be. However, Sing is about a young girl who has lost her mom and is really struggling to then sing. Um, she gets into a drama school in London and she thinks that she's there rather than on merit for who her mom was, as her mom was a ballerina. However, there's just everything in this book. There's a lot of great representation. There's a lot of musicals references. If you didn't know, I'm a massive musicals fan. And I have already pre-ordered the second book in the series, so you know it was good. I then also read After the Silence by Louise O'Neill. This book was pretty damn good. I haven't read any Louise O'Neill, but Victoria keeps telling me that I need to read Only Ever Yours, and I'm on the lookout for it. However... This book, you know from the beginning that Nessa Crowley has been murdered and on the 10th anniversary of the murder, a film crew wants to come to the small island where they live and find out really what happened. And through it, there's some brilliant themes woven in about sex shaming and things like that. And I don't want to say too much because it's the same with any kind of thriller mystery you don't want to give too much away but I found that book really something special and then another four star read which was a bit more light-hearted for me and that was Meet Me in London by Georgia Toffolo again sent to me by Net Galley. I love Toff Toff <laughs> I used to watch a lot of Made in Chelsea haven't watched it for years but I watched her in the jungle and I just think that she's just one of the sweetest people like there's just something about her that lights up a room and this book was exactly her bottled in a book. I was a bit nervous going in because I wanted to love it because I love her but actually I did love the book. The, the girl can write, put it that way. Um, what can I say? Yeah, so um, the main character is a designer in London and at the very beginning of the book enters into a fake romance which is another one of my favourite tropes and during this fake romance they obviously end up falling for each other but neither really knows if the other one is falling for them like they're falling for them if that makes sense so I really enjoyed that. Now on to the five stars there's no order to these apart from the very last one is going to be the best book that I read this month. So the first five star read was actually from NetGalley and this was actually the very last book that I read this month and that's Bella Osborne's One Family Christmas. I know it seems a bit early to be reading Christmas books but when you're on NetGalley this is what happens because these books are released in October so I like to read them actually I read this one quite early I like to read books the month before they're released so that I can talk about them in my books I'm looking forward to next month if you haven't seen this month's already I will link it up here wherever it is I can never work out which side it is and this was just a wholesome book about a family coming together for Christmas but it was so funny there were so many references in it to properly British things I laughed out loud at many points in this and I had a little cry so to me that is a sign of a brilliant romance for me if it makes me laugh 
and cry. I then finally got round to reading this gorgeous arc of Boy Queen by George Lester. George Lester has his own YouTube channel and this book was gorgeous. This book is about Robin who doesn't get into the drama school that he pinned his hopes on and turns to drag instead. This book, there was a lot of homophobia in here but it was so delicately done it really made me go <gasps> to a lot of things and yeah laugh, another laugh and cry from Boy Queen. A book that I think that every white person should read is Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race by Rennie Edo Lodge. I should have read this a lot sooner. I had this on audiobook and read along at the same time. This book made me feel uncomfortable but that's how it is meant to make you feel. I can't really say more other than if you have any doubts on why the Black Lives Matter movement is important, you need to read this. And this is great talking about white privilege, explaining what it is. Yeah, I don't think I can do this book justice. Just pick it up. The next book I read was Lucy Ackroyd's Leaves of Love, Stories for Aging and Dying Well. This is only a short book and I was sent this as part of a blog tour. However, I really love this. I'm not really the target audience of someone that has been caring for the elderly now for nearly 10 years. However, this really brought to light all the little things that you can do for someone to make their life better from kind of massages and yeah. If you have anyone in your family or any interested in care of the elderly, I would highly recommend picking up this book. I also read this month with The Fire on High and I read this as a buddy read with the lovely Victoria. And again, this made me laugh and cry. This book is brilliant. Imani wants to be the chief chef and she has a two year old daughter. There's a lot of scenes in this about race. Um, even down to talking about her daughter's name. As you can see, I've tabbed up a lot of this. One of the things that I really liked about this book is that Imani wasn't judging other people for their decisions. Even her own father and the father of her baby, who she didn't always agree with their choices, but supported them nonetheless. I, I don't know how to explain how good this was. Um, there wasn't quite enough food references for me. Quite a few of these are 4.5 star rated up, right? 4.5 rounded up to 5. However, really loved this book. Only thing I have to say, I think we counted three times in this book that she let out a breath that she didn't know she was holding. And me and Victoria have talked at length to each other about how that makes me cringe more than anything in any book is somebody letting out a breath they didn't know they were holding. And so on to the last book this month. This is my top book of August and wow. The Beauty of Your Face by Sahar Mustafa. Right at the very beginning of this book, a radicalised shooter enters the Nuruddin School for Girls, which is an all, all girls Muslim school in the Chicago suburbs. And from that, our main character goes back through a journey of how she grew up and how she found her faith and it just kept me gripped you know those books that you don't want to put down because you just want to devour them that was this this is really hard hitting i did have to put it down for a little bit in the middle of the month when i wasn't feeling mentally great but generally best book that i've read this month and actually, this is going straight to the top for best book that I have read this year. So I recommend picking that up. Thank you so much to Legend Press for inviting me to be part of this blog tour. You have found me my favourite book of the year. So that's everything. That's the 17 books I read and the four books that I DNF'd. Have you read any of these? There'll be a link down below where you can order these through my Amazon Associates account. And I will get a small commission from that. It doesn't cost you a penny. And obviously, I don't. If you don't want to use Amazon, that is also fine. Until next time though, look after yourselves. And if you did like this video, please consider giving me a thumbs up below as it really helps my channel to grow. Bye.